and today we have among us apostle joshua selma join me with a club innovation to welcome to this microphone the apostle joshua selma koenania is here Praise the name of the Lord. Good morning, everybody. I'd like us to appreciate all the veterans of the gospel here, our bishop and every other person. May the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Bear the weight of your glory over us. Let the light of your river flow. Let the truth of your kingdom let reign on me. Let the weight of your glory flow. Let the weight of your glory. yesterday night usually whenever I go to minister in a city the Holy Spirit would reveal to me the needs of that city and I went to bed and I had a dream I just thought to start by sharing that dream and in that dream I was lifted to the sky and I saw graves many graves and all of a sudden it was like the sound of thunder and I just saw the graves open people began to come out that was what and I believe with all my heart that that is a prophetic picture of what God is doing in this season even though it was three days that Lazarus was dead he said roll away the stone and he spoke he said Lazarus come forth so I just to buttress on what um, Reverend Cannon was saying decline in godliness morals business and so on and so forth let me tell you this it is true that God is able to make a life again and let me speak to you prophetically on each other. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old, because in this season, God is doing a new thing. It will never be said Ichabod over this city again. In the name of Jesus Christ. And for some of the people who are here, you may not even know that you represent the next apostolic and prophetic voices you see it's good to bring in people from every territory to come and strengthen the region but god must raise people from within the region nobody will be more passionate about your region than those who come from the soil is that true we're here for a day or two no matter how anointed we are and we return back but God must raise people. And can I tell you, my dear people, do not despise what God is doing in your life. Some of you are still in the school of the Spirit. No one knows you yet. You are not the Joshua Selmans. But you do not despise what God is doing. It is impossible for God to not have a witness within a city. It's just that the making of men of power is a very hard task. And not many people are willing to stay through until God is done with them. But I'm bringing you a word of hope. One day a shofar will blow over your city and you will see men rise that you did not know. Elijah made a mistake and he said, I'm the only one. And God said, no, there are 7,000 others. There are men and women 
there are intercessors and prophets there are apostles they are still in the school of the spirit they have not gone for any ministration some of them do not even know they are the ones god refused to reveal to them so it does not distract their training but i can tell you i know by the spirit that scattered here and following online the overflows there are many people that god is raising there are many people that God is building. There are Deborah's women of power. There are Esther's who will sit at the palace and preserve the doings of God. There are Elijah's. There are Enoch's. Just help those under the anointing. When you are in an atmosphere like this, you have to be very sensitive because it is not only the teaching of the word ezekiel chapter 2 and verse 1 help them please he said son of man stand up on your feet and i will speak to you but he did not have the strength verse 2 says and the spirit entered me this is the difference between the preaching of the gospel and a lecture there is an infusion of the spirit it's important to discern the kind of grace that you are under is is bringing activations and many of you in the midst of this conference angelic activities supernatural encounters activations of dormant spiritual gifts you are in an atmosphere that can make this happen hallelujah so for the few minutes that we have to spend please do not allow anybody distract you like i said yesterday for every one person who comes here there are destinies that are connected to your obedience destinies connected to your yieldedness it is selfish to not pay attention because the consequence will go beyond you hallelujah So, while the word of God is coming, take away every sense of pride. I know this, I know that. Just keep it. Wisdom is justified by her results. If you don't have results, just humble yourself and settle down and learn. God organizes meetings like this to help us. It's an election of grace. We come to lift up the hands of one another so that the territory can experience the grace of God in a higher dimension please pray one prayer father give me an encounter this morning let it be a desperate prayer from the depth of your heart pray give me an encounter hallelujah Please be seated this morning I want to teach on the church and I want you to please pay attention to the things that I have to say there will be many impartations while I am teaching please whether you are an usher or not just help those under the anointing and so that we minimize distraction holy 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 the Lord God Almighty is the Lord God Almighty my life is full of your glory this house is full of your glory holy holy Holy, 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 holy. There is
there is the spirit of the intercessor i'm saying the number 24 is coming on 24 people the spirit of an intercessor is an activation there are many women i'm seeing the wailing women god is shifting them into that ministry of intercession i stretch my hands all over the auditorium everyone who must drink of this grace in the name of jesus christ may that grace come upon your life the spirit of the intercessor the spirit of the intercessor grace to travail like hannah the prophetess the grace of an intercessor men do not just pray there is an engracing of the spirit that helps men When the fire of the Holy Spirit comes, among the many things that it does is it takes away lukewarmness. You see, let me say something respectfully, especially to co-laborers in the gospel. The truth is that you can fake power, but you cannot fake a genuine relationship with God. Every time you stand before men, you give them a piece of your secret place. You reveal the authenticity of your relationship with the Holy Spirit. This is not about gimmicks. This is not even about being a man of God. If every church in this city, regardless the denomination, carries a measure of fire and presence, that people come for a Sunday service, and within that one hour or two hours, they cannot even explain what has happened to them fire upon their prayer lives fire upon their word life conviction of the holy spirit breaking sinners down transforming believers it's impossible for the city to remain that way help the person who will begin to run out now just bring the person for me here by the power of the holy spirit Help them, help them please, so they don't injure themselves. Spirit of the Sovereign Lord, will you come and make your presence known within the glory of the reason? Spirit of the Sovereign Lord, come and make your presence known with me, the glory of the risen Lord. Let the weight of your glory cover us. Let the light of your river flow. Let the truth of your kingdom, let it rain, let it rain in us. Let the weight of your glory fall. Let the weight of your glory fall. Emmanuel, 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 your name is called Emmanuel, your name is called. Your 
Your name is called Emmanuel. Your name is called. Spirit of the living God, that you will rest upon every one of us. Give us an experience that glorifies Jesus. Give us an experience that lifts up the saints within this territory. Let there be a restoration of dead prayer lives, prayer altars that have gone cold. In the name of Jesus, passion for God that has been lost. Let there be a reignition by the Spirit of grace. hunger for spiritual things that has gone down replaced by a passion for other things I stir up a fire once again stir up a fire once again just be patient with what God is doing you call it a quarry site I stir up a fire once again Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hello, Madonna. Hello, Madonna. I'm speaking to this territory by the spirit there will be a reemergence of three graces one there will be a restoration of the prophetic upon your land I'm speaking to you by the spirit of the living God I don't know why is the prophetic but God is going to begin to raise from any and every denomination strange manifestation prophetic teachers men and women who will have the seeing eyes and even the hearing ears some of them will be young some of them will be old some of them will be uneducated some of them will be educated but all i like is a move of the spirit do not fight it when it comes he will meet people in their homes he will meet students in their campuses fire while they study fellowships will re-emerge with fire and power this will happen by the Spirit of God. Number two, there will be an emergence of Joseph's men and women who will be given grace to preserve the economic heritage of this territory. These are beyond businessmen. These are not just men who do trade. They are men who are given the secrets of the kingdom to preserve the economic heritage. Hear me please listen to me listen to me 
and take note of what I'm saying. The third thing that God is going to do I'm seeing a lot of people who come from this soil and are outside this country. I see many of them returning back to develop the soil. Many, many people. Some of them are blessed people. They will come with projects that you will think is the government doing it, but it's individuals empowered by the Spirit of God. This thing you see will lead to advancement all wise individuals will construct roads you will think is the government but it's a single individual doing it empowered by the holy spirit but for now we're at the quarry side we need to discuss the church please sit down if you can There is a lot of misconception about what the church is and this may be the reason why many people have been unable to experience the power and the grace of God. There is a family that has been oppressed. You are from Imo state. You are not from this state. I'm seeing a family from Emo State. This has been an age-long oppression. I hope I'll be able to teach this morning. We had left the miracle service for the evening so that we can have some time to teach the word, but the Lord is just prompting me. This is a family from Emo State. I'm seeing everything grounded. It looks like nothing. Nobody is rising. Nobody is excelling. Wherever that family is by the Spirit of the Lord, I stretch forth my hands in the name of Jesus help them I come by the rod of a higher priesthood and I declare in the name of Jesus Christ let the reign of darkness let it come to an end now let it come to an end now help them help that woman please. let it come to an end now I bring you the authority of the kingdom and I declare in the name of Jesus, John 1, 5, and the light, help them please, the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Let the light of God's power dispel every activity connected to witchcraft, connected to ancestry. The Bible says, blotting out every handwriting and every ordinance that spoke against us, that he nailed it to his cross. Therefore, help that gentleman, in the name of Jesus, be free now. Be free now. Who is like him? Lion and the lamb. Seated on the throne. Mountains bow down. And every ocean roll to the Lord of Lords. We will praise Adonai from the rising of the sun to the end of every day. Praise Adonai, all the nations of the earth. Can we have some time for the word? Let's see how God helps us. You see, let me tell you this. Sometimes these revelations come because of the hunger and the burden of God's people. And every opportunity God has to reach his people, he just presses in to make sure that within the time allocated for the conference that God's people have genuine encounters. That you will, Moses did not have to tell anybody he met God. There was an evidence. 
so that anyone who could not meet the burning bush needed to only meet Moses and he will have the same experience not everybody will have the opportunity to see the burning bush but the one who saw the burning bush should be able to give the other people the burning bush experience there are other people who did not make it for this conference they shouldn't feel bad when they see you because you should not only carry your own testimony you should also carry an anointing to say even though you went on a business errand and you could not come find rest this is not about men this is about god moving among his people experience your own portion of the deliverance of the healing I started to seek the Lord very early in life I became tired of religion I became tired of all kinds of stories I saw many preachers read from this Bible I studied it myself and I knew that something was wrong because the more I read the Bible the more I knew that many people talking about it or talking from it did not know God. And it, it, was not a, it was not an expression of sarcasm. I knew there had to be something more. Please pay attention now. I would watch the sick come. I would watch oppressed people come. And because of the prophetic inclination, I could be sitting in the church like this and what spirits oppress people while the sermon is going on then we share the grace and the people go back with those oppression and yet we said jesus heals jesus delivers he is the same yesterday today and forever i said no something has to be i mean you cannot tell people to stop idol worship if the alternative you are giving them the idol that has protected someone for 100 years without fail now you are telling the person leave it and what you are giving the person is so carries a semblance of 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 lack of result eventually the person will drop this and go back to what works because nobody leaves what works the reason why the propositions we give people are not well received is because it is not backed with sufficient evidence Are we together? And we will never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you. And we will never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you. So my hunger made me to begin to search scripture. I met a lot of preachers, well-meaning, well-intentioned people, and I asked them questions. We read scriptures like, I was young and now I am old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed beg for bread. Me, I've seen him. I saw many, many righteous people begging for bread. And so I said, something must be wrong. It was not a call to criticism and sarcasm don't get me wrong it was just a hunger in my heart and you see today's world has many alternatives there are about 4,000 religions registered in the world today and anybody can literally just take a step out of the faith life and begin any other pursuit they think Will help their lives find meaning so yesterday night we began to discuss the gospel that works that there is a gospel that does not work and there is a gospel that works for i am not ashamed of the gospel that's for it is the power of god unto salvation to everyone that believes let's go to the book of matthew chapter 16. i'll finish up my story another time Matthew chapter 16 Jesus now is building the disciples through mentorship from verse 13 
these disciples would later become the apostles of the Lamb. The Bible says when he came from the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, now this would be the first mention of the word church from scripture. But the entire discourse started with a question. Question of identity. Who do men say that I, the son of man, am? You know what led to this question? Because when Jesus walked upon the earth, according to some of the synoptic accounts, he began to do great and mighty things. And people saw, they would see him act like Elijah. They would see him act like Jeremiah. They would see him act like some of the prophets. And the idea of reincarnation was something that they believed very, very strong. When you read Bible history, it was not a concept that was... Um, they believed it that people could come in the form or the semblance or the expression of others for instance remember in the book of acts chapter 12 when don't turn there remember when peter came and knocked the door they said they thought it was his angel and they closed the door back so these things were not strange occurrences with the believers then and here we have an expression the disciples had been discussing themselves. Who is this man? One moment he's eating with us. Another moment he's acting as though he's not a man. And Jesus wanted to bring context to that discussion. And he said, all right, I see that you people have been asking all kinds of questions. As you discuss with men, who do they say that I, the son of man, am? Next verse. So they said, some say you are John the Baptist. Some say you are Elijah. Others say you are Jeremiah. And others say you are one of the prophets. Isn't it amazing that you can be close to the truth and yet not know? They were around him, benefiting from him. Just because you are around spiritual things does not mean you know God. You can be around church. You can be around fasting, around prayer, around Bible study. Here are the disciples utterly confused, even though they had worked with Jesus for a while. 15. So he said unto them, I have had the opinion of others. At least they see me from afar. You people who are close to me now, we eat together, we pray together. What is your verdict about me? And to his shock and amazement, none of them had an answer. Next verse. Except Peter speaking by the Spirit. Guess what he said. Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ. King James says, I know who thou art. Christ, the Son of the living God. He never called him Jesus. I know who thou art. You are Christ the son of the living God. Next verse. Jesus answered and said, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood. That means revelation is not within the realm of flesh and blood. You have to rise above the realm of flesh and blood. Access true revelation. Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father which is in heaven, now, Jesus begins to speak, 18. And also I say unto you, you are Peter. And on this rock, what rock? This has become a theological debate for many, many, many centuries. There have been several schools of thought as to what that rock is. Remember, we just agreed that revelation is not within the realm of flesh and blood. Thou art Peter, and upon this rock, I will build my church. Take note of what he's saying now. We're going to walk this scripture now. I will build my church, and I will fashion it in a way and manner that the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The architect is speaking. He's saying, I'm about to build something. It will be so formidable. You will know I built it. 
because it will have such strength against the gates of hell so please go back to verse 18 again we're discussing the church jesus said about three or four things in this scripture number one i am the builder number two the name of what i'm building is called the church number three the dexterity of the architecture will be revealed by its ability to withstand the onslaughts of the gates of hell are we together now and then number four i will build that church on a rock what is the rock now there are theologians here and there are veterans in church history i do not intend by any means to insult your pedigree or whatever it is that you know you have known to be but based on revelation and from the scripture you see this rock was not peter as many people purport no this rock is a strategy i will build my church on this rock a spiritual strategy what is the strategy the strategy is that flesh and blood listen carefully flesh and blood has not revealed this to you but the spirit of my father so it is going to be a church that will be built on a strategy that is absolutely dependent on the spirit of god a strategy that is higher than flesh and blood it would not just come from is beyond science this church i'm building has the foundation from the realm of the spirit it's not just a physical structure are we together because the church is largely not known and understood many of the activities that should be captured within the church is either not captured or not effectively captured and i just want to show us three dimensions of the church this morning and then we'll pray we need to know what the church is and what the church is not are we ready now number one the church of the lord jesus christ is a spiritual strategy write it down the church beyond a people and beyond buildings the first revelation of the church is that it is a strategy the church is not just a people we're coming there the church is not just an institution the church is first and foremost in order of priority a spiritual strategy in fact the only spiritual strategy that sustains the ability to advance the purposes of the kingdom on earth is called the church there is no other strategy that sustains the formidability to make kingdom come happen outside of the church the church is a spiritual strategy are we together Jeremiah chapter 51 let's read from verse 20 to 23 the church is a spiritual strategy the strategy that God will use like you meet a military man please look up those of you who are in military or have been exposed to military usually when military is about to carry out an operation they have a plethora of strategies and they examine the uniqueness of the operation and then they select what strategy is that true they name the strategy after animals they name the strategy after several events it is it is consistent with the military to select a strategy that helps them to deal with a situation this is how it is spiritually Jeremiah 51 we're going to read to 23 thou art my battle axe it didn't say you are holding a battle axe you are it you are my battle axe and then you are a weapon a weapon like a military man holds a gun right he's supposed to do something with that gun and God is saying you are my battle axe and my weapon of war he says with you aha uh -huh. watch this now with you I will break in pieces the nations I will destroy kingdoms we're reading to 23 next verse with you I will break in pieces the horse and its rider 
with you i will break in pieces the chariot and his rider with you i will break in pieces man and woman i will break in pieces young and old i will break in pieces the young man and the maid interesting next verse i will also break in pieces the shepherd and his flock i will break in pieces the husbandman and his yoke of oxen i will break in pieces the captains and rulers what sort of a weapon is this that can break everything it can break men it can break things it can break kingdoms it can break nations it can break animate things inanimate things same weapon thou art my battle axe he's showing you the extent of formidability there are tools that cannot be used for certain operations you can have a small hammer that you use to hit a little nail you can't use it to hit something very large but he's saying this strategy there is nothing it is an all-purpose strategy that strategy has a ministry to the young it has a ministry to the old it has a ministry to the rich it has a ministry to the poor it has a ministry to civilized nation it has a ministry to under civilized nation for as long as you are god's creation you are my battle axe the church is a strategy a strategy that is able to bring kingdom come across every strata of human activities you have to understand this the church was god's invention it was an invention that came from his intelligence the fountain of wisdom came up with an idea an idea that promotes his agenda and he named that idea the church when you know that the church is a strategy that came out from god's wisdom then you know that the church cannot fail the leaders in the church can fail the policies of the church can fail the members in the church can fail but the church as that strategy is backed up by the jealousy of god it cannot fail i think it's important we know this because we live in times where we think the church is just a religious idea just a a moral aspect of society it's more than that the church is a spiritual strategy and it cannot fail because it was built by God himself. Are we together? So the first revelation of the church that I want to bring this morning is that the church is strategy. As you are sitting down right now, you are a strategy. A strategy to do something about the moral decadence in your family. A strategy to do something about the prevalence of witchcraft that means every time come my friend any one of you again that i use gentleman please come watch this so every time there is decadence a family where nobody is rising a family where everybody is going down a family that is deeply rooted in idol worship poverty all kinds of limitations when god wants to help that family he sends a strategy called the church so you are his strategy you are his solution he is not concerned about that situation because he knows that your presence already is a solution to that problem this is why the church is called light the church is called salt light because it gives illumination and direction the church means that you are the eyes that men use to see salt means that you are preservers and then you add taste and value do you know something about the salt and light it is never too late for light to enter a room and it is never too late to add salt there are certain ingredients when you are cooking if you don't add it within a particular time you've lost it but salt even when the food is on the table you can still add it pay attention please so the church is a strategy it is never too late for us to show up there's no such thing as you came too late no not with the church if you were there in 1913 idol worship will not come don't worry now i am here there is still something that can be done about it listen 
don't just look at yourself as a member of a parish that is wonderful but more than that you are God's idea you are a strategy every time you see people crying and say God won't you rise next time you see mama saying will I go to the grave without seeing your salvation in your mind know that your mother is praying for your rising you are God's strategy the strategy will not come from heaven is already here the church is God's battle axe when there was a cry in Israel when they were in Egypt they cried and they cried and they cried a strategy came called Moses is that true Moses was not just a child he was a strategy for deliverance when there was hunger and famine was going to come God raised a strategy called Joseph and kept him there when Haman began to nurse through the spirit of the Antichrist the plot to destroy Israel God the moment he kept Esther there he found rest I have two strategies there is Esther in the palace there is Mordecai at the gate they are enough to take these people God only becomes troubled when he looks around and does not find any strategy if there are enemies coming and you drop a bomb you can run away and watch them act nonsense there because you know that that bomb will explode and defeat them when God drops you somewhere and people are shouting and it looks like he's not answering it's because he has answered Lord when will you arise in this family and you plan to have three children but two more came and you said this is not my it was not my plan to have two more children the prayer of Lord how will you help this family came with two strategies you held them after nine months you call them children but they are not children they are God's strategy for deliverance Lord preserve the Anglican communion so that when we are long gone we will not lose this heritage and there are people who had no business being priests they were planning somewhere maybe to travel abroad and the Holy Spirit meandered them through one sermon there are the strategies that have been kept for the preservation of prophecy listen I want you to know that scattered around your life are strategies that ensure you do not fail these strategies are we together pastor the next time you stand to preach and you look at the members and you are discouraged Lord do something about my finances do something about the decadence in society every one person you stand who is making contact with your eyes on Sunday is a strategy that is an answer to that prayer there is a strategy that will correct something that is happening politically there is a strategy that will correct something that is happening economically just because they do not look like it no act sharpens itself so they come to you blunt it is your responsibility to sharpen that axe when you sharpen the axe then you will see what it can do to a tree if you have eight days to cut a tree you seven days sharpening the knife and you will hit that tree once and it will go down but if the axe head is blunt you will keep hitting for years and for decades are you seeing why this is called a quarry site because among the many things we are not just sharpening stones we are sharpening battle axes God's strategy because for some of you it's time to live out that prophecy before you were born your mother saw something about you and now you are 30 years you are 40 years and mama is saying ah, I don't know what is happening and God is saying don't worry there is a conference this year let them come do not forget this teaching the church is number one a strategy that means you are not supposed to complain anything that is wrong there must be a responsibility component with it if there is corruption within society other people can be saying ah what will we do the church should not join in that lamentation we are the strategy the definition of darkness is the world without us it's not just absence of light no are we together 
everyone you call patriarchs archived in hebrews 11 elders the bible says these men were not just men they were strategies the church is a strategy so mysterious satan cannot understand it because this strategy is not the kind of strategy that operates in the flesh and satan does not understand how this strategy works after many years when jesus watch this when jesus became a man satan knew that he was here for a reason but how redemption would happen satan did not know so when jesus offered himself satan thought that he had prevailed and he led him as a sheep to the slaughter why is this man weak like this this is god in the flesh had they known this they would not have crucified the lord of glory it was a strategy weakness is a strategy that defeats strength every time you see weakness be afraid of it because weakness has the power to defeat strength jesus used weakness to defeat strength esther used weakness to defeat strength when god wants to make you strong he makes you weak it's a mystery you never become strong the grace of god does not look for strong men when it comes and finds strength it goes back and waits until that was why he touched the whole of jacob's tie he said jacob you cannot receive grace you are sufficient in yourself there has to be something that makes you imbalance so that my grace becomes your completer so let me help you i have to create weakness in your life Can I tell you this? Do not be angry that you came from the family you came from. You would not need the grace you want now if you did not come from that background. Strength always looks for weakness. Like light always looks for darkness. Light does not go where there is light. It's not needed there. So when God, knowing the kind of grace that will come upon you, he gave you the honor of coming through a family with such darkness. You've been complaining for a long time. Lord, why didn't they give birth to me in a white house in the presidency? And he said, listen, listen, listen. If I gave birth to you, then you already have your reward. But now that you came from a family of idol worship for 150 years, the grace on your life will show the all-surpassing excellency of God's power. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? And the best gift indeed came out of Nazareth. Are you blessed? The church is a strategy. A strategy that hell cannot understand. How do you win battles just by dancing? Is What kind of a human being are you? Jehoshaphat. You want to win and all you are doing is bringing priests in front of you you see the church is so mysterious that darkness is plaguing a family and god says play music and start dancing and you start dancing in the night i will call upon the lord who is worthy of praise so shall i be saved from my enemies what is the relationship between a dance and salvation what is the relationship between giving and increase? What sort of strategy is that? That there is he that withholdeth he scattereth and yet increaseth. He withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. What kind of a strategy is this that says to pray for your enemies and even them that persecute you? The church is a mysterious strategy that science cannot study. Sociology cannot study. It's a strategy that came from heaven god's own wisdom why will i look at a man who has had cancer for years and brothers and sisters just by calling him a name that is bigger than two of us this man returns to the hospital and stage four cancer is already gone what sort of a strategy is this no surgery no knife what sort of a strategy is this that when a man is speaking people are lifting their hands to receive and all of a sudden you carry a climate of favor and leave that meeting and every door begins to open 
what is strategy the church listen so that you will save yourself the headache of trying to explain yourself to society they will never be able to understand us we are a mystery that when something is about to happen you can be in your room and God takes five years and shows you now what sort of a strategy is that you take poison that should kill you and just before it meets your organs it meets something else and neutralizes just like that he calls it the church listen if you don't respect what God built how many of you have felt insulted women that you take your time and prepare a wonderful meal giving it all your skill your intelligence what do you like in this region what do you eat don't embarrass your people though huh or or soup. okay so whatever it is at least we know that you have prepared that soup and imagine that someone comes and downplays your five hours in the kitchen Is this all you prepared? Um, why is the water not too cold? You look at the person and say, I see. You have to respect that this church that we play around with took a long time. It came from the mind of the creator. He thought about the best way to defeat the gates of darkness. And out of all the research that happened in his head, he came up with this strategy called the church. Don't you downplay the church. Don't you downplay the church. The church is God's strategy. An indomitable strategy. A strategy that wins. The church came before witchcraft in our family started. The church came before defeat came. Governments will rise and fall. Nations will rise and fall. The pride of men will rise and fall. The church is as formidable as the one who built it. If you are in agreement, say amen. Amen. God bless you. Number two, very quickly. The second dimension to the church that you need to understand is that the church, more than a strategy, now refers to men and women. First Peter, please. The church refers to men and women. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 5. Animals are not called the church. Look up, please animals are not called the church the 24 elders are not called the church there is no mention in scripture of the 24 elders or the angelic keda as the church they are part of the heavenly host but every time god calls church church refers to men and women nothing more demons are not called the church plants are not called the church they are part of god's creation so when we talk about the church the church is a, an exclusive definition that only captures men and women are we together now he also as lively stones you are built up a spiritual house and an holy priesthood what for to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to god by christ jesus so the real construction of the church is not made with blocks it's made with men it is a building but it's made up of men when paul was admonishing the church in corinth helping them to manage the move of the spirit to the end that all things be done decently and in order when he gets to chapter 12 now having talked about the gifts of the spirit then 13 then 14 he now began to talk to them about the church being one body even though many members is that true and he began to let the body of christ know that they can work harmoniously together that all cannot be just the hand all cannot be just the eyes and he said there are other parts that are comely and paul made a statement that is very instructive that the more valued you are in the presence of god the more he hides you that means those who are exposed are not really they are all valued by god but the quiet intercessor who is never seen 
like the heart you see that when you look at the human body you see the eyes you see the head you look at the hands you cannot see all the delicate organs but let anything happen to those organs and what is visible will die this is how the church is there are people who may never be on tv there are people who may not be the joshua selmans traveling around if they ask you to arrange in order of relevance it's easy to come to some of us because we are the ones that are seen but in the eyes of the spirit mama who is praying for us that intercessor who is never seen they are the more power if god is to arrange us in order of importance you will be shocked that some of us that you clap for will be at the very back of that queue the one who comes to clean this stage and quietly goes away and nobody sees them you can see us so you can sow into our lives you can write something good about us but the ones who nobody sees their reward is exclusively from god paul was teaching that those parts are even more important the church refers to men and women who work harmoniously in synergy listen carefully to promote the revelation of the christ and the advancement of his kingdom this is called the church the church is a strategy the church refers to men and women listen to me if men and women refuse to cooperate with god you will have to invent another strategy like raising up stones to praise him men and women salvation is not for angels salvation is not for the living creatures salvation is only for men see that you see why satan cannot be forgiven you see why his sins will not go away because salvation is for men when you know this look up please you will now know why satan tries to fight the woman when you are praying for a barren person you are you, your 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 motivation and your intelligence is beyond just showing that you are powerful satan is stopping bodies because there is a law of territory without a body listen carefully without a body you cannot function in this side of god's kingdom even the word when he needed to come to this side of his kingdom even though it was his kingdom he had to hang in the realm of the spirit for nine months until a body was prepared for him one of the reasons why we know that jesus will come is because he departed with his body so we know that he has a body to return back he doesn't need to wait for any virgin again he can come back so anybody who does not believe that jesus will return remind them that he went with a body he already has the body he has satisfied the condition that allows this territory to receive him a body has now prepared for me are you seeing why things like untimely death and the rest are dangerous because satan knows that the only way to stop you from being an effective church is to separate your spirit from your body there is a level of health that this body must be in for your spirit man to be able to cohabit if he's deteriorated beyond a certain level the spirit will have to leave we call it death so when you minister long life and you declare safety for people it's not just a religious thing in jesus name arrive safely no you are saying may your body be kept and preserved because there is an assignment that that body needs to do are we are we blessed now god is expanding to us the way of the kingdom more perfectly like he did in acts chapter 18 so that we understand the motivation behind the decrees we make and the spiritual activities that we communicate you see in this kingdom it's not what you do that produces results it's the understanding that supports what you do two people can do the same thing for one there will be no results because there is no understanding that supports it the seeds that fell on good ground are they that heard the word and understood have i lost you are we still together so the church is made of men and women watch this i believe in excellence i believe in administrative prowess but anytime you exalt the pulpit more than the men anytime you exalt the aces more than the men 
anytime you exalt the mic more than the men the most important component as far as the church is concerned is the men more than the backdrops more than the visuals many times we focus on the acoustics the aesthetics and all those things they are wonderful i will give you pastors after my heart jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 15 shepherds and they are mandated to equip god's church to give them wisdom and knowledge that is the spiritual meal no matter how wonderful you are as a man if you are not fed and nourished to grow and to have stature listen to me you cannot be called an effective member of the body ephesians chapter 4 paul mentoring the church in ephesus when we get to verse 9 he says Ephesians chapter 4 let's read from verse 9 then we jump to 11 or verse yeah verse 9 Ephesians chapter 4 media can you help us let's look at 8 8 I beg your pardon now watch this wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high he led captivity captive look up it and he gave gifts to men the gifts are not talents the gifts are men he gave men to prepare men so the ones you call ministers are not really the ministers the ones you call ministers are the gifts that prepare the ministers the ministers are the ones who receive from the gift that means you so the one you call reverend apostle pastor i know we say they are ministers but from god's idea they are the gifts that prepare the ministers what is ministry any and every scriptural contribution that makes for the revelation of Jesus and the advancement of his kingdom is called ministry ministry has nothing to do with the pulpit it has nothing to do with a building any scriptural contribution motivated by your love for Jesus and intended to reveal the Christ and advance his kingdom if your pregnancy comes from your love for God and is intended to bring a child that reveals Jesus, that pregnancy is called ministry. If your giving seed in the church is motivated by your love for Jesus and intended to promote the revelation of Jesus and the advancement of his kingdom, that act of giving is called ministry. Ministry is not defined by a mic and what you say. No, it is not the activity that defines ministry. It is the motivation and the goal. So there are many people preaching, but they are not in ministry. Why? Because the litmus test, they failed it there. Number one, the motivation is not from the love for God and it's not intended to reveal Jesus and bring him glory. No matter how religious that activity is, it is not ministry. Isaiah was already preaching from chapter 1 to 5. But then chapter 6, the Bible says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I, Isaiah, saw the Lord. When he saw the Lord, you would think he would say, Isaiah, you've been going around preaching. He had a lamentation, who shall we send? Whereas the man is still preaching and doing ministry, and heaven is still saying, who shall we send? In fact, when he met the Lord and said, I am a man of unclean lips, God would have said, no, 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 you are too harsh on yourself. He said, kneel down. They carried a coal of fire to touch him, meaning it was true. Hear me? Never downplay men because it is with men that Jesus is lifted and Jesus is glorified. Every evil in the world today came through men. Every deliverance in the world today came through men, including the man, Jesus. Every trouble in society today, the ambrobas are not spirits. The terrorists are not spirits. They are motivated by spirits. But spirits will not disturb them if they did not carry bodies anything that carries a body the devil is interested in it because he knows that that is a potential worshiper that is a potential lifter of the name of jesus so don't say who did i trouble that trouble is coming to me let me tell you where the trouble is that you came with a body is the trouble We have an idea that if I don't trouble anybody in the village, nothing will trouble me. It's a joke. Provided you carry a body, Satan will not wait till you repent before he attacks you. He knows what bodies can do. 
That's why the church is called the body of Christ. What does that mean? The body that he uses. is only the head. We are the body. So when the Christ wants to lift someone from a wheelchair and the hand is not working well, if you want to lift somebody from a wheelchair and your hand is not working well, even though you have the power, are you seeing why many people are not healed? Because the hands, those who are playing the role of the hands have not been playing it well. What of the eyes? The eyes, some of you have seen patients who have maybe acute states of glaucoma and sometimes they can see, some, they may not even see this and they'll come and hit it. So if the body of Christ just moves like that into error, where are the eyes? The eyes are misleading the body somewhere. Find out what role you have to play in the body and make sure you play it well. There are times that you can have just a little boil, maybe around your ears or, the, or maybe Whitlow. How many of you have had this thing called Whitlow? Your whole body will paralyze because of a tiny finger. This is what is happening in the body of Christ. Because of one person's carelessness, one person's mistake, everybody suffers. Can I tell you this? I'm not preaching, this is not a pastor's conference. But I, let me just steal out a minute or two and tell you this individualism will destroy the body we are a corporate body if i do well and you fail your failure will still affect me we have to know that we are interconnected no matter how i love or hate you that's my own business but as far as moving together is a train no matter how the eyes quarrels with the hand for as long as the hand wants to move forward the eyes must lead it and for as long as the eyes wants to see well, the balm that you put in the eyes will be held by the hand. Are we together? Do not say it does not concern me. That was a mistake of Esther. When her man was plotting to annihilate the Jews, he did not know that it will only start outside the palace, but it will eventually come here. Believers, hear me. Every time you hear that the church is suffering anywhere, whether it's in Anambra here or Meiduguri or anywhere across the world. Don't say it's not my business. You are making the mistake of Esther. Mordecai warned her and said, do not think. The king is yet to know you are a Jew. So by the time he's done with us, they will come into the palace and check if there is any Jew there and they will find you. If Vashti left, you can leave too. And Esther said, let me, mark, let me use the opportunity that I have now to be an effective member. Are we together? So you hear that a church is crying. A, a program like this is happening. And you are an empowered person. You are a multi-millionaire. You are a billionaire. They don't worry. It's not my church. I don't care. By the time somebody who should repent in that church, who is close to your son, who can destroy your son and lead him to cultism, it was that meeting that would have led that person to get born again. Now, you did not sponsor that meeting. He will continue with your own son. It may not affect you but eventually it is that son that will give you heart attack to die and you will leave the money to fools who will destroy it anything you do for the church eventually blesses you you don't have to ask once jesus is going to be lifted and jesus is going to be glorified you can say you know what there is a bag of water i don't know all i know is that Jesus is lifted in this program. Let this bag of... We have to shelve all these, these, these childish and funny things that happen across the body of Christ. It is me, my reputation, Joshua Selman. No. If the whole world is my church, the world will fail. Because I am only a dimension of God. It means I will rob the body of Christ from seeing other aspects of God. I must be unashamed to know and admit that. I can't be the whole church. When Jesus divided himself, he called himself the bread of life. He divided himself among 12 apostles. None of them carried the whole bread. All of them carried little pieces. For you to have the whole bread back, they must come together and form that bread. Everybody only carried a piece of the bread. If the only thing you teach is prosperity, the church will suffer. If the only thing you teach is holiness, the church will suffer. If the only thing you teach is salvation, the church will be saved, but they will not grow. If the only thing you teach is transformation, those who are saved will be built, but you will not have in gathering again.
Can I encourage you? I'm glad that I'm speaking. The church in Onisha must make up their minds that in the name of Jesus, no more fighting. Look, I know we don't agree. I, I, have, I, I have a problem with the way you do your thing, but that is not enough reason to hate you. I should be able to see you and say, good afternoon, sir. How is everything? Oh, you are going for midweek service. May the Lord bless you. And not that he closes the door and says, all these people wait. No, 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 no. It is true that we are not equal. Oh, don't confuse that one. We are equal in Christ. But our sacrifices and election of grace has separated us into spiritual cadres. We must admit that. However, I must be able to hug a man of God with joy. To hug a brother and sister. And say, wow, okay. You believe in this i don't believe in this you believe in deliverance i don't believe in deliverance. no problem no problem it's all right you can hold that perspective but it's too small a reason to cause us to fight <laughs> hear me the church in onisha there is a dimension of the power and the grace of god will soon be praying that cannot be seen by an individual this you already know you are in error when you think you are the only one god is using that already is an attack let me tell you in advance i'm saying this especially to the younger ministers who are rising in as much as you are doing well we have to be careful because most of you you listen to us and you listen to people around and you ship in little little fragments of error and just grant it there is no single individual who has the power to carry all of god while i'm standing here preaching only god will open your eyes to see the intercessors around the world whose prayer lives are by far greater than my own, who are now helping me to stand. How could I take all the credit to myself? No matter how anointed I am, here is a man that God has raised to put this meeting to gather us. It doesn't matter whether you like me or not, but now I have come and you have received me. It's not just because I'm anointed. Here is the person who created the platform. What of the other bishops who gave him a right hand of fellowship? Both the ones who preserve the weapons and the one who goes for war, they all deserve honor. Can I tell you this? Until we learn to mutually honor and respect one another, there will never be unity in the body. Now watch this. Imagine that I come up here after celebrating me and saying many nice things. I come up here and I rubbish every pastor, rubbish your bishop, rubbish a, a dear man of God from Germany, and I make all of you look as if you are not serious, you are not serving God, you don't know anything. Let me bring you revelation. That is error. I may be sincere, but it's error. You may love me, but you will be disappointed in me, and your heart will not be open to receive again. It is at the standpoint, I have come not to outshine, I have not come to intimidate, I have come to lift up your hands together like a family to lift up Jesus are you learning now don't be a notable gospel artist that God is blessing in the city and then you see someone like a come this my dear sister you see this lady who is here and she's singing while she's singing you're like oh don't mind all these people they can't sing anything where is that my man you see when you start thinking like that it looks like just because you prayed in tongues afterwards does not mean you know what you are saying it's an attack everybody created by god has a role to play as far as the revelation of jesus is concerned we who god has granted the the rare privilege the rare privilege i repeat the rare privilege is a privilege If God were to call us based on our prayer lives, based on our word lives, based on our holiness levels, some of us will not even be close to this place. Because my goodness, my God, there are people who love God. There are people who give. They may not be educated. They may, not, they may, they may have never gone to any country, but they love the Lord with all his heart. Be careful, lest on the day that Jesus comes, we'll be very disappointed. You will be surprised to see those who will be in front. Can I speak to the younger ministers? My dear people, listen to me. I love you and I believe what God is doing. But all this little, little pride that is already manifesting in your prayer group, fighting one prayer group, fighting this, kill it now. After this service, go and hug the other brother and say, do you know what? Um, we may not agree with this and that, but it's not the issue of who is a champion, 
who is this one who is that one the, the spirit of competition came from the deprivation that Africa brought anytime you grow up in a territory of deprivation the the instinct to outshine is a weakness in men you must conquer it by the prevailing power of the Holy Spirit please sit down please sit down please sit down are we together I have the rare, listen let me tell you and I don't mean to brag forgive me if I do but I know what it means to be honored I have stood before kings I have stood before royalties I have stood before nobles I know what it means to be honored God has blessed me in a way that it would take me many lifetimes to tell him thank you but I made a vow and a covenant with myself that I will never miss a generation that looks up to me I will teach them that no matter how high you rise you only rise because someone was holding the ladder as you climb. Be wise enough to look down and say, both me who is up there and everyone who helped to hold that ladder. The person who held, who held the ladder is even more important than you. Because if the person leaves that ladder from that height, he will go down. So for those of you who disrespect every other man of God and respect Joshua Selman alone, you are in error. Straight to the point, let me just give you a godly counsel now. The moment you find yourself selecting people to honor, and you see our fathers here who, are, who labor in word and doctrine, some of you have never given them, and please permit my bias, some of them are from your soil. You have never given them 10 naira. Right now, in your pocket, there are all kinds of envelopes. You are waiting to see me and give me. As good as that is, if you cannot honor the people who serve day and night, I'm only here for two days and I'm going back. But the people that pray for you, when you are in trouble, they are the people who stand for you. You see, as men of God, we have to be wise. This is already part minister's conference, part um, general conference. It's impossible to fight and have quarrels when you have this disposition. Um, there must be that element of love. If I come into a place like this, when I came, they graciously took me to your bishop and we had a very pleasant time. We spoke, the ones who came yesterday and um, a bishop here and all of the men of God. See, members will love you even if you shout and quarrel them when they discern that you really value them sincerely. I hope you are learning what I'm teaching. I know at time it's a bit stretched, but just sit down. You call this, you want a revival. In the night, we're going to speak about revival and the move of God, the coming move of God. I'm going to be teaching you while we do the miracle service. But for now, listen to me, my brothers and my sisters. It is important. East of the Niger, hear me. There is a level of unity that you have attained. That's why the devil has not been able to penetrate you thus far. If you lose that unity, you have lost more than money. It's better to lose a billion dollars and preserve that unity. Stop fighting. Stop looking down on one another. Stop enjoying the pain of one another. When you hear that a man of God, listen to me. When you hear that a man of God is sick, don't celebrate it and say, oh, he doesn't know anything about faith. He was laughing at deliverance. No, no, no. Don't let him lose this body. Remember, any minus to this body is minus for an army. You hear that there is a rent problem and that man is about to come to shame and reproach. Somebody should quickly run. You can rebuke him later. But for now, for the sake of the work. I hope you still love me. Sorry that this is hard. This is an apostolic and a prophetic conference. You invited me for a conference. Look at this. My brothers and my sisters, I give you counsel from the Lord. The reason why certain revivals cannot come because it takes a corporate anointing to bring it no matter how you excel as an individual you will not be able to capture certain dimensions of god so let's be careful so that the devil does not deceive us into believing we are the only ones who are doing well what this man is doing is a major work but every one priest here every one man of god regardless of the denomination and fathers of faith 
please with all due respect don't despise the young ones coming they may have their tantrums they may make their mistakes they may be arrogant correct them in love but don't despise them they represent the samuel who will help eli when you despise them and someone else mentors them they will be loyal to the one who raised them not you this is also true for politicians if you are here you are a politician please listen no matter how many years you spend you are in office for only eight years or i don't know how many years they do it now you how many eight years or whatever it is the purpose of access is to help you raise men shame on anybody who does not raise anybody whether in ministry whether in whatever it is you have wasted the access god gave you this is one of the reasons why i love your region as a man of god don't rise alone don't shine alone who are you raising who are you teaching what god taught you the death of a few people should not paralyze what god is doing because they should have transferred something the church refers to men and women so on sunday every time you stand do not just think the members that come to see now are just sheep they are the ministers you are the gift and hear me there are members who also don't listen a sheep does not have a system of defense a sheep does not have horns it depends on the guidance of the shepherd you see that there's a difference between a sheep and a goat a goat has horns it can fight a sheep does not have any instrument to fight on its own it depends on the protection and the covering that comes from the shepherd so the sheep's safety is how close it is to the shepherd if it goes far the wolf will come and devour it automatically when satan wants to destroy you the first law of destruction is isolation through pride he takes you out of the bigger fold and keeps you alone and makes you believe you are doing well then he allows your spiritual fire to go down then he will attack you one day that it will take intercession and the mercy of god for you to recover please don't miss tonight i'm going to be sharing with you something about the coming revival and the move of god so the church is a strategy the church refers to men and women let me give us the last one and then we'll pray number three the church finally is an institution the church is an institution hebrews chapter 10 please from verse 24 and 25 the church now refers to an institution an institution that preserves the only listen to me the only potent or the most potent institution that preserves morals preserves godliness preserves love are we together now is this institution called the church law courts can help to manage criminals manage litigations prison cells and correctional centers can help to manage people who have become a nuisance to society or defaulters of the law but the church is the only institution that sustains the power and the ability to raise men from darkness to light and from light to become objects and influences around the state the church is one of the mind control systems that control the health of a territory i can pick anybody at random from onicha and if i pick 10 believers or 10 citizens and examine them based on their moral values based on their sense of leadership responsibility and so on their lives are a report card they tell me how well this institution called the church is serving within that territory are we together and let us consider one another to provoke unto love and unto good works 25 it says not forsaking the assembling of ourselves as the manner of some is but exhorting one another and also much the more as you see the day approaching every sunday weekday and every other day millions of people within your region the east of the niger within this nation africa and the world 
gather under this name of Jesus Christ under the mentorship of several leaders with different degrees of training can I tell you this men and women of God and the church as an institution is the principal shaper of the convictions and the morals of people within a society when you see high crime rate high irresponsibility rate the church must receive a major portion of that blame we must come up with programs more than sermons that help to fix people programs that are referenced from scripture but are applicable to all and sundry it does not have to be for christians alone are we blessed so the church as an institution must have its expression in schools that control the mind of the young ones when students begin to fail exams when moral decadence begin to grow in the school when students are not respectful younger people disrespecting the elders when the when the values that preserve society are lost is because something about that institution called the church is failing let's mark our work now based on the reference of scripture can you say the young people you are training are becoming responsible young gentlemen can you say the ladies you are training are becoming virtuous ladies who love Jesus and love nation the church is a strategy against darkness and spiritual powers the church refers to men who reveal Jesus and promote his agenda the church is also an institution that raises men preserves morals preserves values no society can truly grow effectively without the value systems that the church promotes even if it's a non-christian territory i can tell you behind their value system will be a lot of components that are consistent with scripture they may not admit the god of the bible but there is the gospel as the message that saves and then there is the gospel as a value system that transforms society both are found in the church the message that saves affects individuals the value system that transforms affects territories you can be saved and yet your territory is not safe because you have embraced the message but you rejected the value system what then is my call this afternoon my call is that the church must return to her position in power. Onisha, you are a city, a region, and by extension, the entire Anambra state, and then the east of the Niger. It's an honor to stand in partnership to speak and to challenge us at such a time as this. The world is waiting to see if the church will fail. But I, I reminded you, and I'm still reminding you again, that the church cannot fail we can fail as individuals but the church will remain because the jealousy of God is behind it if there is any punchline to all that I've said among the many things I've said I think one of the clearest points that you should take back is the unity of the faith the unity of the faith the unity of the faith I hope that by evening we'll have the time to pray and if God allows, we'll just select a few leaders to come and stand up here in unity as we speak over Anambra State. Speak over. Please don't miss tonight. It's going to be a highly prophetic time as we pray. The days of superstar Christianity over. There are four things. That must be found in that institution let me end it this way any church that does not have these four things is not a building it's not an institution it's something else number one in every church as an institution there must be listen carefully there must be the preaching of the gospel of salvation to the end that sinners say number one any christian institution that does not allow for the preaching of the gospel to the end that sinners be saved is not the church 
we may differ like i said in denominations there are all kinds of denominations across across the globe but for any place to be called a church like the building an institution no matter how beautiful the edifice is there must be number one the preaching of the gospel of salvation to the end that sinners be saved jesus must be the epicenter of that gospel number one number two for any church to be called a true church the second thing that must happen is that there must be a sound exegesis of doctrine doctrine is the course curriculum that matures believers the name given to the course curriculum that matures believers is called doctrine doctrines are not opinions doctrines are established truths hebrews chapter 6 from verse 1 and 2 it gives us six foundational doctrines of the faith the course content that matures believers remember yesterday our teaching yesterday night that the greatest need of an unbeliever is what salvation the greatest need of a believer is what transformation it is doctrine that matures believers believers are not matured by opinions and stories doctrine the bible basically contains three things number one the bible contains promises number two the bible contains principles number three the bible contains prophecies so every time we expose ourselves to scripture while interacting with the promises of god the principles of the kingdom and prophecy scattered in every bible story is the revelation of jesus and the precepts of the kingdom they are called the mysteries of the kingdom matthew 13 and verse 11 it has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven doctrine we must restore doctrine doctrine gives a unified system of growth are we together there is a universal way or an acceptable way to be saved if you do not go through it there is the doctrine of salvation you cannot if you say you are saved i will ask you what you did romans chapter 10 from verse 8 down to 12 gives us god's blueprint on how people are saved that with the heart man believes unto righteousness then with the mouth confession is made unto salvation if you do not believe with your heart and you do not confess with your mouth you are not saved it's as simple as that are we together here is where my bias comes in what we have come to know in the body of christ as the apostles creed now all those who are not of the anglican faith here please do not mind i, I don't in any way downplay what you believe and what you stand for but i'm just saying that this in my mind is a very very commendable representation is a creed that that just sets in pace the foundation of the christian faith is an announcing of what you believe are we blessed so number one the preaching of the gospel number two the teaching of the word doctrine being the cause content on what we teach believers number three every true church listen carefully every true church must give allowance for the love and the power of the holy spirit to find expression providing supernatural solutions to the problems of men the church is also a solution center there must be a space given to the holy ghost and i'm not just talking of falling down and shouting no i'm talking about the fact that the holy ghost must have allowance to provide supernatural solutions to men in healings miracles transformation restoration breakthroughs do not say results don't matter they do matter they do matter people come from families that are plagued with all kinds of things poverty rejection degradation while the the word of god comes doctrine works on the belief systems of people the holy ghost must come he must be there as the confirmer of everything that is taught so I come from a family where, for instance, no one has seen the light of day. No one has risen to a position of influence. But because I come to church, the Holy Ghost can now find me there and break that yoke of darkness and give me room to open doors. On account of my result, 
my family members can now come come see a man she said that has told me everything one madman who received healing and deliverance brought 10 cities to jesus one woman as a prostitute who had an encounter with jesus christ went and brought so many people results matter they are real instruments of publicity they bring many to jesus and then finally every true church must have space for fellowship and the demonstration of the love of jesus both to members and society please listen very carefully every true church must have a space that demonstrates and reveals the love of jesus very practically both to members and then to society this is where things like charity this is where things like reaching out to society helping the poor society does not have to believe in jesus to benefit from us our greatest goal is that they come to the saving knowledge of jesus but society have to feel that the life of god is within a territory hear me no matter what denomination no matter what christian sect if these four things are not captured there it is not the church the preaching of the gospel of salvation to the end that sinners be saved jesus christ being the epicenter of that gospel number one test number two a sound exegesis of doctrine to the end that believers be transformed how are they transformed by changing their belief systems sustaining superior belief systems that improve their work with god and improve their being relevant as far as nation building is concerned number three there must be an allowance for the demonstration of the power of the holy spirit providing supernatural solutions for people and then number four the love of jesus must be revealed in a practical and a definite way first to those who are of the household of faith like the bible demands but then it extends to the society everywhere if every one of you is involved in these four things you qualify to be called the church if any church building any denomination is involved in these four things you qualify to be called the church anything outside of it is just religion and a sheer waste of god's time have you been blessed this afternoon please rise up on your feet thank you for your patience it takes time to learn the ways of god in the latter times many will not endure sound doctrine this is the church now you learn that the church is a strategy men who promote kingdom come and an institution that becomes a preserver of morals and so on and so forth i'd like you to pray one prayer for this afternoon father the role that i have to play as far as the church in onisha now you understand what i mean by the church in onisha the church in onisha means the universal body of christ within this region lift your voice and pray the role that i have to play whether as a businessman as a pastor as a politician as a career person as a student i obtain grace from heaven lift your voice and please pray lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray in the name of jesus i obtain grace by the power of the holy spirit i obtain grace hallelujah now please just lend me a minute more before i drop the mic if if um reverend canon allows i had requested that for the miracle service tonight we're going to be i'll just share a bit on the coming move of god and revivals just a few key to initiate and sustain revivals and then we'll have some time to pray we we'll are praying for the sick i'll be ministering to people prophetically but i want to request please write a list is that all right write a list of everything you desire to see that must live your life please bring it even for your loved ones who may not be able to make it it doesn't matter from any nation we have a covenant of answered prayer with god i want you to write it we're all going to gather this prayer request here and in the name of Jesus, let us see the devil this night that is so powerful as to not allow you rise. The Lord bless you. The Lord increase you in Jesus' name.